As a Kingsland parent, I know you desire to have God-connected kids. Kids who desire to know God more and actually have a love for God. But so often what actually happens is we're spending all of our time creating these God smart kids. You know, kids that grow up and they know what to say and how to look and that the correct answer to almost any question in church is Jesus, right? And we give our kids study Bibles to read on their own and they memorize verses in Sunday school and they just go to church because that's what they're supposed to do. You know, all the while they aren't actually experiencing what a relationship with Jesus, you know, really is. And then we say, well, that's why I want to take them to church. So they, they can be a part of this dynamic youth program and be around people that are passionate and, and love God in an amazing, real way. And this can be a beautiful thing, being a part of a vibrant and life-filled community. It will refresh and it will restore us in so many ways. And that's vital and it can be a vital part of their discipleship journey, but it can't be the center of the discipleship journey. Heck, it can't even, can't even be in the top five, really. And as much as it pains me to say that, the church is not the most important place for your kid's discipleship journey. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Memorize his laws and tell them to your children over and over again. Talk about them all the time, whether you're at home or walking along the road or going to bed at night or getting up in the morning. Write down copies and tie them to your wrists and foreheads to help you obey them. Write these laws on the door frames of your homes and on your town gates. You know, honestly, I cannot think of more boring parts of my day than my going to bed routine, my wake up routine, just that same monotonous thing like day in and day out yet right here right right in this passage it's making a note that this time in these things this is where we're supposed to be instilling jesus and these truths into our children in everyday mundane parts of life at home with you god has picked you and your home as the place our children will grow from god smart kids to god connected kids You know, Beck, myself, and and countless volunteers, you know, we will always be here uh, to give of our time and our lives to your children, to to encourage them, support them, to love them, to help them take those next steps in discipleship, to encourage them, you know, when they're down. But but the church can never, ever be as effective as you can be. You know what, what, we have them for maybe, what, an hour a week, maybe two if we're lucky, for a whopping total of 100 hours a year. You have them for thousands of hours, and and that's outside of work and sleep time. You have them for thousands of hours, and and that's lifetime. The time you have to share life with them, and and we believe in you. We really do. You know, I'm I'm sure if most of you are like me, being responsible for our, our children's spiritual journey, it can weigh heavy, very, very heavy on us. And it can scare us. It can make us feel like we're not equipped. We can't do this. This is not something that that we are capable of really even doing. You know, maybe we don't even know how we feel about God ourselves, let alone instructing someone else on their spiritual journey. And then we get afraid. We get afraid of messing up and we don't want to force, right? We we never want to force our ideals onto someone else. We want them to, to, to choose. We want the freedom to give them. And we want them, though, to choose God on their own. And maybe that leaves us just waiting, right? We're waiting for this perfect moment that we can, we, we can spring God on our kids and show them how God works in our lives. And we keep waiting for this moment. And when, when one finally comes along, we kind of flounder and flub and, and force something out. And it, it never, it never comes out the way we envision it coming out. And that just leaves us more scared of trying it again in the future. And we just leave that responsibility then to the church. What did it say in Deuteronomy? Talk to them all the time, whether you're at home or walking along the road or going to bed at night or getting up in the morning. Write down copies and tie them to your wrists and foreheads to help you obey them. The disciples, they they lived in these mundane moments with Jesus. The walking from town to town, the going to bed, the waking up, the cooking dinner, the making breakfast, 
every moment in between what we see in Scripture. It feels just like a few weeks, but they lived with him for three years. And think of every mundane, ordinary, taking a bath, using the toilet moment they shared together. I mean, well, maybe don't think about all of them, but but know that God does his best work in the mundane. He does his best work in those ordinary moments of life because that's where life is real. That's where life is raw, and that's where life uh, and God becomes real to your kids. And, and this is a possible thing for you to achieve at home with them. You know, heck, you know, for me to achieve with my kids who are, who are the same age as many of yours. You know, we can do this. And you know why it's possible, though? Because this is how God designed it. And it's designed to work when you're exhausted. And it's designed to work when you're tired or when you're barely dressed or when you're out of your mind crazy and done with your day. It's designed to work in all of that. And if you take a hold of these ideals that we'll be discussing with you over the next few weeks or months, this idea of parenting for faith, pay very close attention to this. You on your worst day will be more effective than us here on our best. Think of that. You on your very worst day, if you've taken a hold of these ideals of parenting for faith, you on your very worst day will be more effective than what we can do on our best day. Have you ever been to a church where where the the pastor and the leadership team put on this air of perfection? Where it seemed like there are these like sinless, godly saints in a world full of us, these sinners who need repentance and possibly even their blessing in order to repent. You know, but that bravado and that perfectionism, it, it oftentimes makes us feel like we can never be good enough for God. We, 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 we could never, ever be like this picture of perfectionism that is being presented to us. The churches that I've grown the most in are those where the leaders show vulnerabilities and, and failure and how God works in this chaos of life. You know, and your kids are the same. You don't have to put on this idea of perfectionism in regards to your relationship with God. You know, life with God isn't about being ideal. You know, what our children need is not a perfect and polished parents and their perfect relationship with God. I mean, first off, they'll just see right through that. And second, it'll make them feel like they can never, ever achieve that. You see, we, we are co-journeyers, if that's even a word. We are co-journeyers in this life with our kids. And you want to know what they're really looking at? What they really see? They're looking at how do we handle sickness and disease? How do we handle heartache? How do we handle anger and pain? How do we handle frustration? And when we live authentically with our kids, They can look over and see what a relationship with God is really all about. You see, when you can embrace this idea that God works in the mundane, that God works in our brokenness, that God works in the everyday normalcy of life, that God works through all of that in you for your kids to see, when you embrace all of that, you know, now you are parenting for faith. And one of the things I hope you do is just join me, join Beck over the next few weeks and months as we help show you what it means to parent for faith from home. Beck is leading a class through August, uh, but we want to give you little tidbits here to show you that you can do this and together we stand a chance of raising God-connected kids. Bless you guys today. Thank you.